Thank you. So, good morning, one and all. Uh, it's a great pleasure to talk to you, all the faculty members out there. And uh, during this pandemic, uh, this is the right topic to know about. And I expect many would understand the topic uh, purpose. And uh, this topic is very much pertaining to the points of this uh, calamity. And many uh, started doing uh, online courses, and some universities and colleges started working on online education. So this would somehow be helpful to them. And uh, there is nothing new in this uh, webinar, but I want to bring in some of the glimpses of all the aspects that is happening around the world and what's the technology being used. And uh, this is the agenda we have today. Uh, in this uh, uh, presentation, I'm going to talk about the first the conventional versus ICT-based education system, uh, which is very cheap. And then uh, things happening. Okay, and uh, what do you mean on active learning? How to bring students to be so active in the classroom? First, in about the technology, first I want to do something on the learning technology. Learning technology is very much important. If you know the purpose of the learning, then you bring it to the classroom. So again, we are going to discuss about the digital technology. There, I'm going to talk about the tools and the other things followed in the market and other universities in the world. So this is the agenda for today's uh, webinar. And first, I go and explain the basics that we all know. This is uh, very simple because I want to start from the scratch. So that is what I bring this slide to your view. First one is the traditional classroom. If you look at the traditional classroom, we know that the strength is there limited size of the stem, uh, classroom, and the uh, timetable is followed, which is very much synchronous. From one time to other time, the faculty will come. From time, next time, some other faculty will come. It is completely synchronous with one another. And the student strength is also uh, restricted based on their organization policy and university policy. And students may physically come into the classroom and they listen. And it is very, uh, very challenging for the faculty to teach the students in terms of understanding the students' nature, their psychology, and we need to take the class according to their interests. So it is very much challenging. Whereas in the case of ICT-based education, if it is an online education, it is not so. So the faculty, without knowing who he is talking to, like this kind of uh, webinar, he is keep talking and he is delivering the content without any fumbles and without any uh, mistakes. So he prepared the content very well and he delivered it as if all the students are going to learn without any uh, hindrance. And that is objective here. So Again, there is no time followed. It is completely asynchronous. Means that what? Once uh, the class is, is delivered, the students can view it anytime, anywhere, as per his wish. So here in the traditional version, mostly we use markers or charts or PowerPoint slides, something like that. But whereas in the case of ICT, we have the option of using animations. Multimedia content can be included in the slides. So there are so much of technologies has been used. Many iPads, many things have been comes into the place. So we can use those simulation tools or you can use any multimedia tools for us to get the content delivered in an attractive manner to the students. So we have followed some digital library here. So students can download materials on their own demand. Whereas here, the textbooks are there. Students have to go to library and uh, they have to get the uh, book and uh, they, have to, uh, they have to buy the book. So these are things followed in a, a traditional classroom. So there are certain limitations both on traditional as well as ICT. We cannot completely say that ICT-based education is completely good. It is due room for new sort of learning. It is not like that. It pales some sort of easiness for us to understand and deliver the content so as to so that so as to spread and make the learning very easy. That's the one important thing. So in considering the aspects of uh, easy learning, the ICT-based education system has come into place. And during this kind of pandemic, it is very much helpful for many of the organizations and particularly the universities are doing in a smoother functioning of these kind of things. So that is one aspect. Second one is the traditional classroom. We have some limitations. So we need the students to come to the class and we need some proper restrictions. So that is a kind of thing we have on a both sides. So both the sides are pros and cons. Both the sides have some restrictions. In technology, we go to technology, there are some limitations. If we come to classrooms, again, we have certain limitations. Like you cannot show animation, you cannot go for multiple tools. Though you can use it in the slides, it is not up to the mark. So that is the one important thing we have here. So with that place, I move on to the paradigm shift. This is what the paradigm shift has happened in the last one decade. The last one decade is the, as you all know, we are in the fourth industrial revolution. 
and I, I and I believe that many you know about the industrial revolution happened in the world. I had the first industrial revolution, second industrial revolution, third industrial revolution, and now we are the fourth industrial revolution. Now I don't want to talk about the first two industrial revolution. It is all about manufacturing. It is all about steel, and it is all about textile industries. So that was developed a lot. Now in the third industrial revolution, what was proclaimed was the third industrial revolution is all about the digital era, right? They put so much of money. All the governments in the world has put so much of money in developing the research and development of computing. So the computer science and IT industry has developed a lot in the last one or two decades. So the decade was dedicated only for computer and the IT based education systems and industries. But now, the World Economic Forum in Geneva, they, they come to a conclusion that again, they want to give the same thing to the IT and the computer science industries, right? So they decided to invest more money on artificial intelligence and machine learning. So the next decade is fully deployed for artificial intelligence and machine learning. In that case, the system has to understand, the machine has to understand what the human is talking about, what the human is interacting with the machine. The system has to understand implicitly and all the process has to be known to the machine in a much easier context. So for that, so much of money has been invested and the paradigm shift is going to be happen in a newer sense. So the coming decade is very crucial for us. The next 10 years is very crucial for us as a faculty, as a teacher. We need to equip ourselves and we need to be industry ready. For that, it is a factory model of education has been transformed to broadcast model of education. Here it was unidirectional. The teacher is keep talking and student is keep on learning and keep on listening. Right? And I will tell you one more slide. I have other slide also. What would happen if students keep on learning? How much of percent he has earned? How much of percent he has observed? So I will show in another slide that I am explaining very clearly. But that is somewhat monotonous. Students will feel monotonous and they feel lethargic in the classroom. So that sort of thing has been changed to broadcast model of education, that is ICT based education. And here, later, as we all know, teacher centered learning. The teacher is a sole objective, seat is a central point, a pivotal point, and student has to listen. Whereas here, the learner is a pivotal point. The course has been designed in terms of a learner's ability, in terms of learner's request. That is being happening here. So learner centered learning has been happening around the world now. Earlier, we have to wait for the teachers to deliver the class. Now, here, what happened? We have to think what student wants to know. What if I if I offer an online course? If I offer an online course for the college or for the university, whether I get sufficient student to be enrolled for the particular course, and student will be benefited. Will the student give sufficient or good feedback for us? So it is all about learner-centered learning. So that has been changed now. So if you want to know more on learner's ability, we have to be very aware of the prevailing things happening around the world. What is the trend? What is the culture? What is activity-based learning? What is thing happening around the world? We have to see what other education industries are doing, what other universities of foreign countries are doing. We also we have to tap into the information of all these things so as to get the correct order for learning. And this is the peak of it. And uh, this is a famous slogan given by Bill Gates last uh, uh, five years back. And uh, he has said that though the technology has developed a lot, and the technology is just a tool for us to learn, but it cannot be a sole proprietary for all the things. What is so important is the teacher is very important for us. The teacher is the most important point in learning, right? He is the one who is going to motivate the student. So we cannot completely rely on technology. That is one aspect because now everything has changed. Now what, what all the things are doing is we're all running behind the technology. We are running behind the technologies and other tools. So we should be aware that there is an important fact called the teacher is the most important and deciding factor in this education system. So the technology is not a motivating factor. The technology is not a pivotal point. This is just a supplement to our education system. That's it. So the technology is just adding a flower to us. That's all. It's just adding a separate thing to us. That's it. nothing else in it. So what is so important is the teacher is most important. They are the motivating factors. They are the pivotal point. They are the focal point for us. That he is the one who is going to uh, give some more insight to the students. So that is a very important slogan given by Bill Gates a few years back. And uh, there is a complete transformation has happened between information technology to information communication technology. Because of that, many online education systems have been changed. Online tools have been emerged out. Many things have been changed. Earlier, if you have only information technology that has been that has been infused only to industry-based uh, uh, projects. Now, with the help of ICT, now information plus communication technology, information technology plus the communication technology, the blend has paved the way for 
education system to equip themselves for new sort of uh, learning. So this is very much important for us. Now, the trend has changed. Because of the ICT, the trend has changed. Now, almost all the people, particularly from starting with children to adults, adults to the age old people, now everybody started using uh, mobile phones. And uh, it says that for children, for children and students, particularly from the 18 to, sorry, uh, even uh, age of uh, 6 to age up to 14 or 15, they say that 7.5 hours, approximately 8 hours per day, they are using mobile phones for technology, for entertainment technology. Most of the people take their mobile phones for their bedroom. It is happening for all nowadays. Right? So mobile phone is continuing to be their best friend for everyone. He is a best friend. Right? So with that base, now we are preparing for online course. So this is one of the important study we have. Now, now look at this diagram. This is, a, this is the picture we have. So technology culture is changed. Earlier, please go slow, someone is walking. Now the, the slogan has changed to please go, someone is texting. Children are texting. So the boards are changed. And if you go any place for booking a ticket or in the cinema theater, wherever we go, whenever they are free, they keep seeing their mobile phones. Some seeing WhatsApp, some seeing Facebook, some seeing somebody may Google it, somebody may transact the, the money for their order, for their booking. So everybody is using mobile phone. So this is a culture is happening. Everybody has mobile phone. So now we have to use it appropriately. We have to change the dimension of using the mobile phones to a yeah, useful one. So that far that this is a funny cartoon we have. Now this is a funny cartoon stating that what is happening around uh, the market. Now say so the syllabus for this year has the uh, following apps because it has been happening like that. So uh, and I believe that many have been attending many uh, uh, webinars. In many of the webinars, you have been knowing many of the tools like uh, what is the uh, Zoom app, what is the uh, web, uh, web uh, WebEx on what is the Microsoft team and what is GoToMeeting. There are many of you familiar with these tools now, right? So this has become a trend. Whenever something is going on, so people have to know about the app, people have to know about the application, about the tool, about the software. So people have to accustom accustomed to those things. So it has become a trend for all the students as well as the faculty or, or to the, even the layman, he has to know many of the apps for transaction, the money, for booking the product or for getting a any money for all of that, this has become a trend. So this is a cartoon published in Times of India. So that's why I've taken here. I think this is somewhat useful. And this is come back to the core point. This is something I explained just a few minutes back, right? In a traditional classroom, if you keep on talking and the students keep on listening, if they keep on hearing, then what happened is only 20% they can remember. Only 20% of what we teach they can remember. And if you keep on seeing and listening, at most, they can get only 30%, right? And so it will not cross above 50%. This is for in average. But if you take uh, active-based learning classes, that is, if the student is actually participating in the class, and if we hear, hear the student's opinion, his judgment, his answer, his comments about the problem. So if you take uh, analysis of this, then we can understand that his learning has gradually increased. So the ultimate aim is, have we given sufficient problem to the student to solve? Have we given the student sufficient room for them to analyze the problem? Are we in a position to listen patiently if the student is having giving a wrong answer? So active learning is all about trial and error. You cannot expect everything goes fine on your way. It is not possible. If you expect that all the students should be silent in the class, there should be no commotion happening around the class. If you expect like that, then it is utter waste. There must be a discussion. If you say a topic, there must be a discussion happening in the classroom. There must be a problem. There must be a solution. There must be a comment. There must be a disargument, argument and disargument, agreement. So that has to be happened. That is what, in the right hand side, if you see learning outcomes, if you say, if they read or hear or they see the content that we deliver, or they do both, they see, hear, and read, then what happened? Maximum to the maximum, they can get 50% of the remembrance of the subject. For that, what we do is, in the question paper, we always ask questions like that. Define, describe, list, explain, apply, something like this. If you ask questions like this, they will not experiment anything new. They will not come out with a new problem. They will not come out with a new solution. They will not agree or disagree on your statement. We always expect the student to disagree on your statement. That is the first important thing we have to remember that. So this technology has changed. Likewise, the faculty has to change. We have to adapt to the situation. 
if you go by the conventional way of uh, uh, delivering a lecture there are many problems so for that i am going to give some examples that is the first half i am going to discuss only that i am going to give examples what all the ways in which we can uh, actually make the student to particip participate in the class so that is the ultimate aim here so if you look at here if you say the questions like define describe list in the blue class bloom stacks on me many of you have understood bloom stacks on me they are following it in their uh, curriculum and i believe that it is uh, strictly followed so i i am going to show a slide of it and that time i'll tell you what are the type of questions they have been asking mostly so if you ask those questions the students uh, learning ability cannot be augmented so with it will be itself largely so if you want to develop the students uh, the uh, personality skills as well as their uh, uh, talent then we have to go for the active learning based education system so for that we have to be very careful now if i use ict if i bring in ict integration to the learning it facilitates the operations like communicating analyzing creating and contributing so if a student is able to communicate well with one another analyze the problems with the groups and creating a new problem or creating a ambiance for them to solve and contributing to the problem if they are contributing a lot to the problem or question that we ask the student then it, they become an active users they become active users so for that ict is very important so ict is very much important in doing this stuff next one is this is the important thing uh, i want to uh, put more emphasis on because the model of for technology adaptation is for faculty members this is for our faculty members so there are five categories here five stages one is familiarization utilization integration reorientation and evaluation so familiarization means what as i as said just now we the faculties know many of the tools online tools many of the online tools like uh, zoom app or uh, webex or microsoft team we know that but are we using it in our class are we ready to use it we are familiarized with all the tools which is helpful for ict based education system yes we are all familiar we know that we know all the things what is to what is the thing to on it what can do on the place everything we know but we have some reluctance we have some reluctance to not to implement in the class we have some fear that is one aspect that is it is we can increasingly aware of ict tools but there are some reluctance in doing that that is one category second category is yes the faculty is completely aware of the tools and the benefits and then what he is doing is he is doing that in the classroom while he doing that he says some problems he says glitches technical errors some mistake happened because of the technology because of the communication because of the network so there has been a constant disturbance in effect because of that though they use and to use it face the technology they face some problems they face some problems because of that they have not used it they go out of that that is one category one category of a faculty members now third category is integration yes there is a difficulty in doing the stuff there are some latency issue there are some network issue the students are not cooperating the students will, uh, 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 different infrastructure is completely different so we are not orienting them well so in that case the integration is happened means the teacher is well enough to go for an alternate way of doing it you can know what is the appropriate use of ict and how to integrate it to the ongoing teaching process so for that he is prepared enough to go for an alternate way to solve the problems what are the problems he has been facing i'm going to give solution for all of this that's why i'm explaining this so familiarization means what faculty know faculty or student know about it but have a fear of not to use it that is one category utilization means yes they are ready to use it and they have been using it while using it they face some problems technical problem and network problem or some problems they may be facing so for that what they do is they are fed up and they are not using it for long integration means yes they face some problem and they know how to integrate with some other new technologies what's an alternate way for doing it how to solve the problem that we face these are the three important categories so we have to focus more on third category the integration use of ict and integration of ict in our education system for that i'm going to give some of the tips and uh, things for us to how to integrate it how to adjust ourselves if the technology is not helpful if the network is not fully covered to us so how to i'll go for an alternate way how to recover from that loss and, and that kind of problem so that i'm going to say it and fourth one is reorientation that is very important are we calibrating ourselves for a new set of technology that is very important reorienting ourselves for new set of technology say the yeah, technology is there i am using the technology for the purpose it has been designed 
but if i designed it or if i am using it for some other purpose the purpose of the technology has been changed and reoriented to some other purpose then it is uh, up to the faculty to exploit the nature of the technology that is one thing if we do like that a new sort of evolution will be happening so the ict evolution this is the thing i said already the evolution has been happening all around and next decade is all about artificial intelligence so many other government that is what i said in the world economic forum happened last year the 2019 geneva conference it has been proclaimed and announced that all the government must be ready to invest more money on artificial intelligence and machine learning so as to make the machine to understand human language and their interaction so next year is all about that so more evolution you can expect in terms of ict and other development so this is what so these are the components of ict so software as you all know there are many softwares many applications many apps for mobile so we are familiarizing with that and hardware in the sense that it may be a laptop or a, a pc or a tablet or an ipad or a mobile phone whatever it may be and transaction means what either i'm doing a data transaction or money transaction or whatever it may be so transaction is very much important if you're doing any courses online so for that we are doing many transactions transaction in the sense that we send data request response all the things whenever it is going as a request and response that is become as a transaction if you computer science faculty know about much about it it is not about money transaction is not about only money it is largely on data nowadays so this year is or this decade is all about data this year this this decade in all the coming years it's all about data so data is a central point of all the discussions so the communication technology as you all know the electronic and other medium communication has been developed and communication technology with the help of communication technology only many things has been made possible and data this now is about the data so there are huge amount of data is get generated and because of social media and other things huge amount of data is get generated and for storing the data now it is been easy now i'm going to say in the technology side i'm going to give some tips for the faculty the it to know about how to store the data in the cloud so i am giving a simple and easy in a single second in single minute i'm going to facilitate the operation of how to do programming without any installing of without any packages installation so i'm going to give some tips uh, insight on how to install the packages and how to get the use of it so other i just i'm going to use it later and uh, we need the internet access as you all we need internet access without internet access this things cannot be possible so that is a major barrier for us so because of 4g internet connectivity though we are using 4g internet connectivity though it is not been sufficient for us to deliver the content without the uh, um, the disturbance so that is a major problem we have now and uh, next one is cloud computing cloud computing that is uh, very much needed uh, because of that only many things have been made possible we are storing the data data accessibility and data reusability can be made possible because of the cloud computing technologies so these are important technologies we need to know on icd based education system next there are some challenges yes this is what i said there are some challenges in digital gap there is a network and accessibility of the data or the resources or in transforming that uh, content for all of them there are some digital gaps there are some challenges there are some possibly impossibilities you saw that that is uh, the role of uh, in the market and industry to deliver a new content to us new model to us so that has been happening now and the personal information or if you go for customized information that time there are some problems and proper utilization of the resource is also a bigger danger there is a serious threat is been happening malware or some sort of ransomware or trojan there are many serious threats happening no proper utilization became a biggest uh, hurdle for us and now why do we integrate ict education ict in education what is the purpose of it So it is easy for us to collaborate with one another. That is the first subject too. And second one is networking can be made easy possible. So we can partner with another universities, other colleges, and other students can come over here and allows easy sharing of resource. That means that what we can share our resource in a single go without any interference, without any problem. So with the advent of uh, uh, Google Drive, or if you go for Microsoft One Drive, or you can go for Dropbox, or you can go for GitHub. In all the places, we can store or uh, share our resources. so sharing of resources become easiest possibility now so i just now said cloud computing so cloud computing helps a lot in sharing the resources so many of you been using google drive for sharing your resources but there are sort of limit restrictions are there so you need to understand what is the difference between google drive one box one drive and the dropbox so please see that which one is so convenient if you are using microsoft team then up to 65 is there if you are using microsoft team then you have to store your content in one drive so it is restricted to only that 
But if you want to make it public, please be cautious. If you want to make your resource public, you have to be very cautious on that aspect. So that is a very important thing I want to highlight at the end of the lecture. I'm going to give you some of the possibilities, some of the tips for others to learn about what are the serious measures we have to take for sharing the resources. So at the end of the lecture, I'm going to share that one on the security threat has been happening. And next one is uh, effective accessibility resources. In that case, uh, uh, once the data is shared on on drive online medium, we can use it. We can use it for our convenience. So accessibility become made easy. And ubiquitous learning means ubiquitous education means what? This is the one thing that we be very proud of on ICT education. That is, if I offer an online course, if I offer an online course, then students from various parts of the country is going to study the course, and the syllabus for the course is same for all over the student, all over the student, all over the student from various countries. So this is very much important. So here, if I'm offering a course in VIT, only VIT students can go to learn it. Suppose in JNTU, it is only JNT students going to learn it. But if I offer an online course, then students will come from wide places, from different areas. So all are going to study the same syllabus, same content, same material, all are going to follow the same exam quiz, and everything is same. So it empowers their learning. So everybody is going to learn the same content for the course, and everybody is following the same quiz. And everything has been happening in a smoother and a, a, a easiest way. So that is what going there. That is why we integrate ICT in uh, education. And this uh, digital classroom, as you all know, the curriculum is uh, flexible, it is creative and user friendly based on the user uh, uh, request and the learner's ability and learner's willingness. We design a curriculum and an environment can be online or blended or flipped classroom. I'm going to explain about what is flipped classroom, what technology for, for us to use. I'll explain it very clearly slides and next one textbook what is a textbook conventional way means it is video tutorial useful books or art books whatever it may be and if you go for digital mindset it is completely changed now it is completely adapted to a new scenario it is flexible creative brain friendly it is up to the learners to decide whether they want to go for lower level thinking or higher level thinking like that so this is the important thing next one is i come back to the higher order thinking for higher order thinking so this is a very important thing of course, if you want to follow ICT based education system in your syllabus, first thing is we have to know about IR order thinking. Designing IR order question requires huge planning time for the faculty members. You cannot ask questions very easily without proper planning. We cannot ask IR order questions. So it is challenging for the faculties and the professors to, for all the teachers, it is very challenging for them to take time in setting the IR order questions. Questions which are very critical, questions which are very tough for them to think, and uh, you should be open ended. You should be open ended. So, I want before I go into the questionnaire, I'm, I'm just to say a few things. Who needs to be a good questioner? A reporter, a scientist, or a doctor, a lawyer, or a mechanic, or a presenter, or a teacher, and a student. Here, who is to be a good questioner? Means here, all the people listed here are, must be a good questioner. If the reporter is not questioning the incident even, then he cannot publish a good content, yeah, authentic content. Likewise, the scientist is not interpreting, interpreting, intercepting his uh, experiment, and he's not questioning his experiment, then again, it's a problem for him. He cannot come up with a good solution. Likewise, doctor, if the doctor is not asking any question to the patient and simply prescribing a medicine to him, then what happens? The student, the patient the condition will be in critical. So likewise, everybody has to be a good the questioner here. If they are ready to question much, then they are learning much. That's the important thing. So here, if you want to ask high-level questions, for that, you must be ready for open-ended questions. That means, what is an open-ended question? Means that he must be, he in the sense that he or she, the teacher should be ready to get diverse answer from the student. The answer must be a yeah, correct answer or incorrect answer, or his argument is valid or invalid but whether he is passing some comments or whether he is agreeing on the content or not problem or not that is a very important thing or he is come up with uh, he or she is come up with uh, a new set of uh, ideas so that is what our question should be we always have to justify the statement ask the student to justify the statement or problem statement if we ask a student to justify it or substantiate the argument then they will come up with many ideas many solutions many opinions that would be helpful for them to understand. If you get many opinions from many students, then the students will learn a lot. They will think about how other students are thinking and their out-of-box thinking will be evaluated and exhibited in the classroom. So for that, 
the teacher as teacher is very it is, it is very challenging for the teachers and uh, for asking FD questions it is really very challenging so if you are asking lower level question then it is uh, the students uh, it is only increase students preparedness and comprehension understanding and if you cannot understanding the student strength very easily by this what they are doing is they are just reviewing the content and summarizing the content that's all they are doing it they are prepared it and they are vomiting in the exam that's all nothing else has happened but if you are doing higher level question in such cases we are asking problem solving questions or we are giving scenarios and encourage for discussions and the students are come up with the new ideas and solve problems so thereby we are increasing their learnability so that is the ultimate game and uh, many of you know about the bloom's digital taxonomy that has been followed in many of the other series also you learned about it these are important things lower order skills to higher order skills in that we are discussing about remembering understanding applying analyzing evaluating and creating so if i go for first three it is not it's higher order skills and the last three is all about higher order skills creating evaluating unless you make the students to creatively think about the problem and ask them to go out of the box thinking that is ultimate aim and uh, and this is all the uh, question we uh, have to ask in the examinations if you uh, prepare for it. So if you are asking questions like list, enumerate, recall, state, define something like this, or if you are asking questions like uh, understand, uh, understandability of uh, classify, describe, discuss, explain, identity, locate, recognize, then this will not bring any effect to them. So we have to go for analyze, evaluate, and create. For that, we have to ask questions like criticize the statement. Given a paragraph, ask them to criticize it, discriminate it, distinguish it, examine. So we have to be prepared enough. So for that, it is up to the faculty to take so much of time on it and understanding the question and then work on it. Then uh, about active learning, for that, uh, now I come back to the original last slide. So these are the six scenarios we have. One is the mobile debate, expert jigsaw, project-based learning, knowledge market, fair light project assessment, and then collaborative learning. Among that, I want to talk only about expert jigsaw, project-based learning, and uh, knowledge market and fair like uh, project assessment. So I want to discuss only this. So if you if you practice these things in our classrooms, then you are ready for ICT based education. If you are practicing these four things, if you are ready to practice these things, then you must be able to deliver the content in online forum very easily. So your, if you want to use online tools, if you want to use online tools, then you must be ready to do these things. If you are ready to do these two, these four or five things, then we are ready to go for ICT based education system. Suppose, no, all I want is I want to deliver a lecture in the classrooms. I want to deliver the lecture in Zoom app. I want to deliver my lecture in Cisco Web Cisco, sorry, WebEx, Cisco WebEx or Microsoft Team or go to meeting, whatever it may be. Then please don't do that. For only for delivering the content, you can go by any way. But if you want to make ICT fully fledged for your learning and the students' learning, then only you have to go for what? These things. First one, inertial, I'm going to explain. This is a simple thing. This has been happening. Expert Jiksha means take a classroom. Other classroom, give you a problem. Give you five or six problems. Choose a leader. Ask volunteers for each and every problem. Suppose you are taking four problems to the classrooms. Assume that for a problem. Then for the four problem, you ask for the volunteers who wants to lead the problem then who want to join to the problem what are the students want to the problem so student will be categorized here we have to be very cautious by doing this task we should not discriminate anyone as an expert learner or an highest uh, 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 smart student or middle level student or low uh, category student low grade student we cannot discriminate students like that but it is up to the faculty to decide upon it mostly what happened is mostly what happened is when i give you a problem students will not volunteer for a leader to be a leader only few students will come up so we have to encourage the students to come up and to join in the problem join in the team and rest others the friends will join and thereby we go one by one in the beginning that is why i said many people are familiarized with these things when they go and practice in the class that time they fail because the cooperation of student will not be used. It is not that much welcomable. So it is up to the faculty or the teacher to bring in this practice in the classroom. It will take some time initially, but once students understand that, there is, that is easy, there is convenience for them. So that is one way, there is one way. Second one is project-based learning. So this has been happening in Viet University for long. 
right? We have a component called what J component for every course, for program material course, for any many courses, for practical courses, we have a J component. But then whenever we teach the theory course, simultaneously the lab is also going. And uh, for that lab also, we have one more component called what project-based learning. There, the student has to do projects on what they understood on the theory as well as a lab component. They have to come with a new product or new design or new solution or with a new kind of a proposed model. So but that means they are able to make a new, make a solution or integrate the problem or remake or reshow something else for them or at least they imagine what else they can do and propose their model. So that is a to explore their inner, in, 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 in inner talent. So that is very much important. Project-based learning is very much important. We have to be, give more problems to the student or ask the students to come up with their own problem and we have to track them whether they are doing it in a sincere manner. So that is project-based learning. If I do that for a project-based learning, it is not that only one student has to do that. We have to give sufficient numbers. Take for a group uh, five members. So all the five members will do. Initially, you cannot expect that all the five members will do the project. Only two will do it, others to be a spectator. Though it is up to the team to decide about it. They have to be challenging, they have to challenge themselves and they have to come up with a new product and new solution. So project-based learning is very much important. If you are doing that, if you are ready to do project-based learning, then you can go for online tool like Microsoft Team. This is the point I want to make. Yes, now, how to channelize it? How can I conduct review? How can I see the progress? How can I see that they are doing it with their own or they copy from somewhere else? So how can I track that? So Microsoft Teams paves way for all these things. In Microsoft Teams, if somebody is familiar with the Microsoft Teams, then there is an option called, uh, if uh, time permits, if the time permits, and I ask the convener or organizer, I can go for a demo. So if I go for the demo, that they will understand how can I host the content, how can I channelize the projects and other things, and how can I conduct everything? I'll tell you that later. Right? So project-based learning, it is up to the faculty, and if you give a project-based learning to the student, the learnability will largely increase. The second one is called what knowledge market. So this is the other important thing we need to know. So first I give you a, give a scenario. In Nashville, I'm explaining this. Say a student Bob. Let's take a student Bob. Now he wants to get some solution for a problem. So he's simplifying a fraction. He's having a problem. Now you don't know who to ask. Most of the times we can, a student cannot come to a faculty or a teacher to get the problem solved. So what they expect is, they want some someone's help, the friend help or some expert's help. So what they can do is, there's other column called what I can help on. So who is the person? Ali says that I can solve the Bob's problem. So can any, I, I cannot have a discussion here. Now say, this scenario can be very easily solved in online mode. And, uh, and, I, and I largely believe that many of you are aware of Quora, DZone, Stack Exchange, Stack Overflow, GitHub, Jig for Geeks. There are many online forums where the student can ask questions and get their opinion from different experts, whom, whom they are don't know anything. They are completely anonymous, but still using Quora or the Stack Exchange and Stack Overflow or GitHub or Dzor or Jig for Geeks. Whatever there are many online forums available. There, whenever a student have a problem in in GitHub, also they are getting many solutions. Right? Many people are solving the problems. I'll come to that and how to post your uh, content in GitHub and what is the easiest way for us to do. I'll come to all the aspects in other aspect of slide. Now, first I want to bring in the as learn, bring in the aspect of why we need to go, why we head towards ICT-based education system, why we need to go for ICT-based education system and online tools, why we have to follow. For that, I'm supplementing these facts. So knowledge market is there, huge knowledge market is there. Quora is the most popular one. There are many experts available in Quora. Acharya is there. There are many online tools or online forums are there. So using that, we can get many knowledges. So we have to we have to introduce these things. We have to inform the students. Though they know that, we have to inform them. Yes, if you have any doubt, you please refer your content, refer your problems, get answer from these places. If you not track me. So we have to inform them what are the possibilities we have. So then they have a good discussion with among themselves. And next one is called what fair like project assessment. This is word only seems anonymous, but this we are all doing it many ways. That is, thon or code thon, make a thon. These are all the fair like assessments. So in the project based learning or in the first year expert jigsaw, we we give different problems to the students to work out. Whereas in the hackathon. We ask a student to solve the problems. For a given problem, how many people is going to solve the problem? 
but given a but given a single problem how many people is ready to solve it in a stipulated time period how many people come up with a different solution different opinions different ideas how they solve the problem in a different approach so it helps so in the preparation the first half one person will be doing it other half will be listening and the second half the first half will be listening the second half will be presenting the uh, uh, implementation so thereby their interaction is largely increased in vip every week we have hackathon or codeathon or makeathon so we got huge responses from the students and uh, i can share the videos or if you, i can share the snapshot of it how actively the students are participating in those discussions thing is that we give the freedom for them for 24 hours so complete all the 24 hours we give the freedom day and night they are working right and they are solving the problems and come up with the good solutions so you cannot think that the solution is appropriate but they come with a different solution which is very much needed to the teaching faculty so we understood that these are all the things needed these are the four ways if we do these things then we can enhance the student uh, competence we are giving a learning space to the students and to use the right technology in place so thereby the student role is also become critical that is a student is a vantage point in governing the learning space of the student right use of technology by the student and the key competence of the student has been exhibited the talent has been tapped out so how do i know that the talent of the student the competency of the student has been tapped out well during their graduation by means of these things, by, by means of project based learning or hackathon or codeathon or expert jiksha only by these means we can know that yes the students have come up with well come up well and they have groomed a lot in their education and the learning so that is a important thing we need to do it so the students role as largely there and the learning space we are that as a teacher we are giving them a proper learning space and that by the student competency has been enhanced next i come to the important point now when i talked about the model of technology adaptation there i talked about familiarization utilization and integration so let's come to the second part familiarization many of us know about the tools available second part i said that utilization in that there is a problem what is the problem yes the faculty is ready to go with the microsoft team or they are ready to go with the zoom app yes they can go but what the major problem we hear from the faculty is from us all of us it is the faculty in the sense including me right what most what major problem we face the problem we face is network the issue latency digital disconnection student problems student connection is not proper weak sharing of resources not properly utilized there are so much of problems comes in for that i give a solution yes the solution is the flipped classroom flipped classroom paves a way for a lot of things it is easy for faculties now to make these things possible without any hurdle without any disturbance in a larger way thing is that they have to use the proper tool so i suggest a tool for you to use the tool for you you know about zoom app right you all use zoom app now i ask you to use loom l o o m loom app in the loom app you can take the video of yourself lecture yourself record the lecture and now you put the like give a url of the lecture to your student so they can see your content at any time anywhere so the idea of flipped classroom is the major purpose of having flipped classroom for the teacher and the student is before you go for the class say for example tomorrow you have a class on a topic now take a video of the topic and topic in that home present it to the students in the advance and tomorrow when you go to the class you no need to take a class in the sir class thing is that you have to get questions from the student so there by the discussion among the students will be happening and we cannot expect that in the beginning the students will ask questions student will be very uh, lazy or they are not in a mood to ask questions but if you go by this practice in reality it has been happening so before we go for the class what we do is we uh give a video the youtube video or a uh, uh, flipped class video to the students a loom video to the students they see the video well in advance and next day when they come to the class they ask question to us so the, the the class is open for questions so we can get diverse question we can discuss with the students and they will uh, largely discuss with them so we can ask students many questions so this is the one important idea otherwise if you don't want to follow that pattern no need to go for a class for discussion yes you can post your videos there that thereby students whenever they have time 
they can uh, get the content very easily. So flipped classroom is very much useful when compared to traditional classroom. In the traditional classroom, the teachers keep on talking in front of the student, but whereas the flipped classroom, the teacher has to record himself in front of the camera and then uh, host it into the uh, forum, and the student is going to use it whenever they want. So thereby, the student can sit alone or among his friends, he can listen it, and they can disagree and argue, and argue. all this can happen. So Loom map you can use for this, for flipped classroom, you can go for loom map. Second one, I come to the core point. What about the digital skills? So uh, many would expect that I would be talking about some of the tools. Uh, since in the topic I have given that ICT tools been given, ICT tools because the topic says that I did ICT tools and innovative practices. Now I come to that point. What about the digital skills? So first one is first thing I want to say is many of you have know about many of you know about other tools like Zoom app and um, uh, Cisco, WebEx, all the things you have learned about. Now, I want to give something extra. Other than that, I want to give something extra to the faculty members. And I believe that many people know about Google Collab. So Google Collab is the easiest one, simplest one, and the hassle-free operation. If you are expecting hassle-free operation for your lab component, this is only for lab component. And if you want to use it for the projects, for the theory assignment, Yes, most welcome. And this tool is only applicable for computer science and IT faculty members. Later, I come to other faculty members when they have the, if the students of computer, if the faculties of computer science, then this tool, this package is very much useful for them. So why do you have to go for Google Collab? As I said already, you are not going to install any software or any packages or any libraries for your Python or project code. No need to install anything, right? Uh, you are saving all the things on the Google Drive. Thing is that you must have a Google account. So many of you know that if you have a Google account, then the same account can be used for Gmail, Rob, uh, Google Drive, or uh, this one, uh, uh, blogging, for all the things for images, for all the things this is being used, right? So only uh, prerequisite for this is you must have a Google account. Once you have Google account, then go to Google Drive. In the Google Drive, right click it, there, select option called what more, and there you can find the collaborator. This collaborator, if you collaborate there, it will ask you to open a notepad, new notepad, mostly a Jupyter notebook. So, Jupyter notebook is Python, right? So, nowadays everybody is uh, working on Python. Python is the most and uh, prevalently used technology language tool, open source tool available for all the faculty members and students to use. And many of the research components are comes under it because in Python there are many libraries we can use it. So, if you want to use Python, Ready to use Python. If you go for some other thing, also you can use it. Runtime, you can change to some other Python also, right? Uh, that is also possible. So, if your hardware capacity is very less, say, for example, if you are using your laptop, you have less CPU. The CPU capacity is very, very less. You cannot do much task. You cannot go for massive data set operation. Somebody is doing research. Somebody may be doing research. For that, there are no uh, facilities in the lab or in the machine, but they want to test the data set. The data set size is in GBs. But if you are loading it in your laptop or in a personal PC, it will not execute it. It will take so much of time for executing it. For that, it is expecting GPU or TPU. That we don't have. Because of the hardware restriction, we don't have that. But using this collaborator, you can achieve that. You can utilize the GPU. You can, if you want, you can go for TPU also. If you are dealing with the tensor, exponential values, or number, if you are dealing with matrices and numbers, in such cases, you have to go for what tensor operation, but it's called TPU. So tensor processing unit is also there. Or if your data set is very small, then you have to go for what? CPU. If your data set or the model you're choosing is very large or medium, in that case, you have to go for what? GPU. It is up to you to decide what data set, what is size of the data set, whether my CPU is enough. If the CPU is taking so much of time, you choose a different CPU over your hardware here. So you can feel the difference. You can feel the difference. One more important thing is the advantage of uh, uh, this one, uh, uh, um, Google Collaborator is. You can share your code to your students. Let's say, I give a simple example. Let's say you want to give a programming assignment to the student. What you can do is, you just type four code, you give a problem to a student, solve this problem, and give a few codes, and ask the student to fill the remaining course. And host it in Jupyter, or you can host it in a Google Drive, and give a share the link to the student. So they will log in, and they can fill it up, and the submit date, you can track the details. So this is made possible in Google Collab. Google Collab 
it is very easy for the faculty members to give their assignments theoretical assignment or lab assignment or coding assignment to them and get it solved particularly if they are doing it on python most welcome if you can do it in python yes you can do it on say the same thing can be used for nlp natural language processing you can go it for machine learning you can go for ai if you go for if you are data mining if you are going for text mining if you are handling these courses yes this is the easiest way and if you are doing phd and if you are doing if you want to test your data set if you want to compare your data set values and come up with a new problem solution for all of this this is a useful thing this is a important tool i expect you to follow if you go there it is very simple and if you are install a package suppose you're going to install packages no need to install packages on your laptop you are not consuming your memory your laptop memory or personal memory you are not consuming memory because it is saving everything on the google drive itself right you can free up it and the one more thing is that google collab is not a tool please understand that google collab is not a tool you are running your tool in the browser itself you are running a tool in the browser itself it studies yeah google collab you are itself so installing the packages or any directories or any libraries or any data set if you are storing it and running it that is been happening in the browser itself so in its in turn store into the google drive so that is a larger thing here and i expect you will be using it next i come to microsoft team and uh, if someone is asking me if someone is asking me sir which tool are you have to use for uh, this online education online class and other things i suggest microsoft team because it is very easy and one more important thing is you have to understand your university or your institute or your college should partner with microsoft team and microsoft team will populate all the student and faculty details into the portal and then you are ready to use if you are doing that then i would suggest to use microsoft team it is very much useful why i am saying this so useful is it is not only to take class you can give assignment you can conduct quiz you can uh, conduct project review separate groups that is what i said the project based learning if you are using project based learning you have to go for microsoft team for channelizing it so separate group id can be created and uh, the advantage is whenever you are giving marks the marks can be added to the grade to the student so suppose you have some students in the class then you are conducting process so marks for some students will be added you are giving assignment yes marks for some students for assignment is also added you are taking some exams projects all the things can be added and finally you are getting excel sheet of all the sound student what marks they get in each and every component so you can download a csv file or excel file on your own convenience so grade is also get generated so for that you don't need to go for any separate software for using this many colleges are doing it but if you are using microsoft team it is easy so you can you can download the videos you can share that video in other forums everything is made possible so this is happening in zoom you can share the videos you can download the videos and other quiz also conducted in zoom also but if you if you go to microsoft team there it is somewhat convenience and i'll tell you one drawback in microsoft team and zoom and other apps i'll come to the later next one is schoology that is a very important this is the point i want to make it somebody don't want to use say microsoft team or zoom or something like that they want to follow only the flipped classrooms as i said already flipped classrooms or they want to conduct only quizzes or they want to post the materials the only material class materials or assignments or they want to uh, drop some content the drop box online drop box so for that schoology is a better tool i would recommend schoology in schoology we have the option also this is though it seems simple many people are familiar with that though it seems simple but it is very useful and powerful that is the important thing i want to make at this juncture that is and one important thing i would say is for quizzes for quizzes if you go for microsoft team or zoom or other apps there what that you know is you have to populate the question one by one and we have only 10 question means only one print question can be populated into it but whereas in the case of uh, schoology that is here in schoology we can uh, upload all the things all the suppose you have 50 questions for quiz 1 you can upload all the 50 questions in the question bank and uh, you can use the question bank for quiz 1 stating that i want to pass only 10 questions so students will get different questions in chronological order we shuffle the questions randomly and give it to students so students may sit next to one one another they may be sitting adjacent to one another but they will get different questions right so for that the question bank is a new component schoology is much somewhat better in doing this stuff like this if you want to post assignment schoology is better again it is very simple very easy following this is a learning management system is lms is very much useful for schoology and then i come to uh, the last part 
that means uh, that uh, uh, courses what all the courses we have been offering uh, that is in the in, we can get from the online courses like you can you can, under, uh, you can participate or register yourself in coursera or e dash udacity or hpi or mexico or the knowledge many universities are coming up with new courses and they are offering courses online and i would recommend if you want to learn something good i would recommend to go for coursera or e dex because in coursera uh, they are in partner in tie up with the association with the stanford mit and brown body universities so many lenient uh, eminent professors are conducting courses and you can feel the difference so certificate is also somewhat worthful so i would recommend to go for coursera or edx courses now for this one month some of the courses have become free for us to register and uh, we can get uh, many useful information from it and uh, now before i close uh, before i close this session um, though these things are very simple many people are aware of it but i want to give again some glimpses of the security risk because nowadays many people are using online social media online tools many things and uh, because of the time constraint because of the pressure and other stuff we following it up we just following it up without seeing, thinking about the security risk we just accept it so security issue is very important so that is been prevalently happening so that cyber criminal will send a mail to the user to the email id and please don't click that attachment let's say it's a ransomware it will be a malware so don't click any anonymous mail nowadays many mails are coming to many of the people and don't click any of the urls given in it or don't open any of the attachments given in the mail if you think that that is suspicious it's not come from the authentic source and if you have a proper security installer on your machine software package the anti software packages and packages are available in your machine then these problems will not face even then there are new trends happening on ransomware so the new virus is able to decide whether your computer is useful for mining for them can they get some ransom from you or not you are, do you have any secret information confidential information in your system or not so for that time if the system if the virus decides that yes this system has so much of information for, for them to steal then we do the crypto jacking during the time of crypto jacking your cpu operation will be withheld and you cannot do many operation you will feel the difference that you cannot move the mouse you cannot uh, run the code or you cannot uh, done anything many things uh, very ease of done so that is an important thing please note down uh, don't install anything unnecessarily don't install unknown applications in your system though i i very well know that these things you all know about it but i just want to pass the information as a just a caution nothing else so new viruses are coming now many things have been roaming around and if you look at that uh, what is a very important thing is somebody is claiming for money they install software i stole your data if you want to get back your data please pay this much of ransom this is money to my account in bitcoins or something like that they have been asking it please don't pay attention to it don't pay any uh, money to them so don't hear their voices please they will not do anything what you do is you have to make a complaint that's it you should not make them any amount you should not pay them any amount and so don't open any suspicious links or urls and uh, please ensure that you have a antivirus software which is updated and you have a software patches which are updated and back up your data and one more important thing i want to add at this point uh, though you all know about it i want to add it again please don't save the passwords in your systems don't save the bank passwords or your system passwords any password details url details in your systems please don't do that try to remember it that's the only thing that's the only possible so don't save any of your secret information confidential information in your system that is a one advice or suggestion i am giving right now and uh, uh, that is a other important fact i want to say is data breaches so and uh, just in the year uh, 2018 Uh, singapore health question detail almost 1.5 million health question detail has been lost including pm list uh, health data has been stolen this is a huge data breach happened and now rain geo is doing that rain geo is also doing that kind of things our data has been get stolen and it has been breached the data breach has been happened now so please what is our caution is please install anti virus anti malware software firewall network access control and you have to say check that you have a proper encryption mechanism followed in your whatsapp group and other things please ensure these things and now i uh, in rushab in just few minutes i just want to go further because these things you already know if you have a white suppose if any mathematics faculty want to use uh, equation other things they can go for microsoft whiteboard and uh, they, if you want to learn anything new on skill development you can go for nimi learning online and uh, there are many online courses of iit iit and iisc in youtube 
this is a link for it you can go for youtube slash users or mptel hard or if you want to go to their browser in, the, uh, in their url yes mptel.ac.in is there there you can uh, find many of the online courses and you can visit yourself so mptel is conducting every year in two semesters so you can gain knowledge there also and, and in vid we ask the students to register for mptel courses and credit is also given to them they can earn credits based on their uh, number of hours and number of days they are working on uh, the particular uh, course and then swayam so uh, many of us know and then mind map for our analysis and class tools for a class code generator this is helpful for students to create things creatively and ed puzzles so many of the khan academy and many of the things are there uh, uh, many um, uh, business market uh, online tools are available here you can get use of it and uh, in uh, in uh, just in a uh, uh, light note i just want to show some of the slides on grammar because many people are doing research for them this is so much useful so many people are writing articles and publishing it for them uh, you can go for grammar check on uh, grammarly and hemingway or paper writer and jinjan so which one is highly recommended grammarly is highly recommended but they are asking for some money on monthly basis or yearly basis subscription is there yes you can go buy that and hemingway and paper writer are online but they are also asking for prices they have given some beta version you can use it for one month and you can get it done like this plagiarism if you are going for publication please check your document before you go for uh, publishing it and uh, plagiarism is very much important and uh, predatory journals are there there are many predatory journals there are fraud journals available please don't go for it and uh, submit your papers in uh, online and very peer review journals corpus index journals and the cim text so turnitin is the most famous one the trust what you want and you can uh, check your plagiarism report here you say if you are interested to uh get the license of this yes you can go for it otherwise you can go for flag scan and copy scan so i just want to conclude it so icd doesn't automatically add quality in teaching and learning unless and otherwise the faculty is ready and affordable for that so if you take voluntary effort if you are eager to learn more if you have the patient if you are spending so much of time in taking the questions and undergoing doing this kind of stuff then icts can accelerate our improvement accelerate our learning and improve our learning process not for the faculty as well as the student as well so it creates a uh, it provides a uh, means of gathering connecting analyzing the data okay. for learning so with this i close today's the uh, uh, webinar and uh, the forum is open for question if anybody wants to ask question yes i am happy to ask her the questions